AMD has unofficially been crowned the king of the CPU market. Looking at online reviews and recommendations from PC forums clearly points to AMD being the favorable choice. But it wasn't always this way. From nearly going bankrupt in the early 2010s to being the preferred choice around the world, this is the rise of AMD. AMD, or Advanced Micro Devices, is an American semiconductor company whose primary market is selling high-performance CPUs to consumers, OEMs, including but not limited to Dell, HP, and Lenovo, and for server-grade systems. Although it was founded in 1969 with current headquarters in Santa Clara, California, our story begins in 2014. At this point, AMD shares were trading at an all-time low of around $2 to $4 in contrast to the $90 to $100 that it frequently trades at today. Not only was AMD competing against Intel in the CPU business, but they were also competing against Nvidia in the GPU business with the acquisition of former graphics company ATI for $5.4 billion. In 2014, AMD reported an operating loss of $155 million compared to 2013's operating income of $103 million. AMD was a smaller company than both Intel and Nvidia and did not have the resources necessary to compete with them at the time. AMD's Athlon and Phenom CPUs, which were released in the 2000s, were strong competitors to Intel CPUs at the time, but Intel's release of its new Core i series in 2010 on its Nehala microarchitecture and the subsequent second generation Sandy Ridge CPUs in 2011 posed a serious threat to AMD. There were significant microarchitectural improvements, higher clock speeds, and higher core counts. But how had AMD slipped so far down? Let's go back in time a little bit. In the fourth quarter of 2011, AMD announced the release of its bulldozer CPUs, commonly known as FX series CPUs. The goal of FX CPUs was to provide high core counts along with high clock speeds, and FX CPUs were a replacement of its Phenom and Athlon line, which were generally well received by the market. FX CPUs were also competition of Intel's Nehalem and Sandy Bridge CPUs, so AMD needed to bring a lot to the table they didn't. In fact, the launch of FX series chips was so disastrous, it nearly sent AMD into bankruptcy. So why did this happen? AMD was sued in 2015 for false claims related to CPU core counts on these FX series chips. It ended with a $12.1 million payout to a settlement fund that was paid out to owners of the specified FX CPUs, sending AMD tumbling down a dangerous path in which they did not have a competing CPU to Intel for numerous years. To understand why AMD was sued for false claims related to CPU core counts, let's take a look at how CPU cores work. In order to understand how cores work, we need to understand cache. There are three main types of cache on a CPU. There's level 1 cache, which is the fastest, level 2 cache, which is the next fastest, and level 3 cache, which is the slowest of the three. Let's start with level 1 cache. Within level 1 cache, there are two types that are found on CPUs, which are iCache, or instruction cache, which handles instructions for the CPU to process, and dcache, or data cache, which handles data outputted by the CPU. Level 2 cache is used as a buffer or storage of instructions and data between the level 1 cache and the level 3 cache. Level 3 cache is essentially like a larger level 2 cache, which is usually shared between all cores and acts like a medium to store and handle instructions and data. Here's how a sample CPU is normally laid out. This is a crude diagram, but it will serve our purpose of explaining why Bulldozer was so controversial. Normally, each core would have its own floating point unit, which is used to calculate larger math operations, level 1 cache, which is made up of instruction cache and data cache, and level 2 cache. Obviously, you'd want each core to have its own resources, or personal assistant in a sense, because if you have one personal assistant for multiple people, they may not be able to properly manage every person. What made Bulldozer so controversial was the fact that instead of each core getting its own separate parts, the floating point unit, instruction cache, and level 2 cache were shared between two cores, effectively making four separate modules made up of two cores each. This is something known as CMT, or Clustered Multi-Threading. If you look at almost any CPU today, you'll see it says something like 8 cores and 16 threads, or 4 cores and 8 threads. 
This is known as SMT, or simultaneous multi-threading, or Intel calls it hyper-threading, where each CPU core is effectively assigned to logical cores, or threads, which can handle a specific task. AMD's response to hyper-threading was CMT, or clustered multi-threading, and instead of breaking each core into two threads, they decided to go the complete opposite way and combine two cores into one module, which would then be considered one effective core with two processing cores inside it. This made it fall behind quad-core models from Intel because the resources had to be shared between two cores. While AMD claimed their chips were true 8 cores, the prosecutor argued that they weren't actually true 8 cores because they couldn't actually run separate processes due to the shared instruction cache. This essentially made it 4 cores instead of 8, and even then FX chips did not perform very well compared to Intel CPUs, especially when adjusted for performance per watt. They weren't really a big step up from previous generation Phenom chips, and Intel's chips were just better in every way. Not only did you get more performance out of Intel CPUs, you also didn't have to get a stronger cooler to keep your CPU from getting damaged. In a statement from AMD, they said, quote, AMD is pleased to have reached a settlement of this lawsuit. While we believe the allegations are without merit, we also believe that eliminating the distractions and settling the litigation is in our best interest. The subsequent CPU microarchitectures that followed from AMD were roughly based on the same microarchitecture and thus performed very poorly. From this point onwards, Intel had taken the spotlight and AMD quietly sat backstage. After the FX series chips were released, and Intel's second generation Sandy Bridge proved victorious over AMD, Intel began to relax. Sandy Bridge is widely regarded as the last great CPU microarchitecture from Intel because the microarchitectures that followed were all minimal improvements from generation to generation. After the $12.1 million lawsuit, AMD was lacking in its competition with Intel and also in money. For the fiscal year of 2015, AMD reported a revenue of $3.99 billion, US dollars, down 28% from 2014, and an operating loss of a staggering $481 million. US dollars. AMD announced they were taking some time off and they were planning to release a new CPU microarchitecture, Zen, which promised to provide a significant IPC increase as well as fix many of the architectural failures of the FX series chips. If AMD didn't deliver, they were expected to go bankrupt by 2020. But there was one major difference. In late 2014, Rory Reed, then CEO of AMD and currently the CEO of Vonage, announced he would be stepping down to take a position at Dell. The person who would be replacing him would be none other than Dr. Lisa Su, who had previously had a 20-year-long career in the semiconductor industry in the likes of Texas Instruments, IBM, and Freescale Semiconductor. Another prominent figure for AMD was Jim Keller, who led the team that was going to design these new Zen CPUs. The goal of Zen was to provide a well-rounded, affordable CPU lineup with easy scalability so one design could be scaled from 4 cores to 16 cores to 64 cores without the need for a major rework or redesign of the chip. Many people were doubtful of Zen after AMD's previous fiasco, while some people were hopeful for it due to Intel's stagnant CPU lineups. In 2015, Intel released their 14 nanometer Skylake microarchitecture, which was used for the next four generations of its CPUs, meaning very little performance uplift from generation to generation. This made a lot of people worried about the state of the CPU market, as Intel was free to do as they pleased. AMD didn't have any competing products, and they were also deep in debt. This is why many people wanted Zen to be a success, so Intel would be forced to break out of years and years of no innovation and minimal gains in performance. Finally, in 2017, Ryzen, which was the name of the product lineup of these 14 nanometer Zen based CPUs, finally hit the markets. The result from the public was terrible. The first generation of Ryzen CPUs, which included the likes of the popular Ryzen 5 1600 and Ryzen 7 1700, were full of issues on launch. Lots of users reported memory issues, such as instability that meant they had to run the RAM speeds as low as 2133 MHz, along with CPU-related errors such as instability with certain applications. Unfortunately, AMD needed to rush Ryzen CPUs out of the door, so first-generation CPUs required a lot of updates in order to get fixed. Apart from those issues, Ryzen was popular for three main reasons. The first reason was performance per dollar relative to Intel. 
Ryzen CPUs performed extremely well compared to Intel CPUs when adjusted for performance per dollar, and AMD had plenty of well-performing budget offerings which Intel did not really have. The second reason was because of high core counts. 8 cores for consumer CPUs on Intel side wasn't seen until 9th generation CPUs, with the i7-9700K being 8 core and 8 threaded. That was released in 2018, a full year after Ryzen launched, which included the Ryzen 7 1700, an 8 core and 16 threaded CPU. The third reason was ECC RAM. ECC RAM, or error correcting code RAM, utilizes ECC to self correct corrupted data on the memory. Intel reserved ECC RAM support for its server products only, meaning that anyone who wanted to run a home server, for example, could choose between paying thousands of dollars for buying and maintaining an Intel server, or just buy an $100 CPU from AMD that already supports ECC RAM. In 2018, AMD released their second generation of Ryzen CPUs based on the 12 nanometer Zen Plus microarchitecture. By this point, the memory stability issues had been resolved through AGISA updates, which is essentially updates to the microcode on the CPU. A lot more people began buying in on Ryzen CPUs, and by November of 2018, AMD CPUs were outselling Intel CPUs 2 to 1 on Mindfactory, a German PC part retailer. AMD was slowly coming back up from its 6 year slump. Intel wasn't planning to stay stagnant. They promised 10 nanometer desktop chips in a few years back in 2017, but they were not able to get any of those chips out for desktop PCs. Instead, Intel decided to stay on the Skylake microarchitecture and up the core counts from generation to generation. In 2017, the release of 8th generation Coffee Lake chips was a major turning point in the CPU market, as Intel had finally shifted its i7 chips off of 4 cores and 8 threads and onto 6 cores and 12 threads. The following year, Coffee Lake Refresh was released, with the i5 model sporting 6 cores and 6 threads, the i7s having 8 cores and 8 threads, and the i9 models having 8 cores and 16 threads. AMD continued to push forward though, and in 2019 they released Zen 2, which further closed the performance gap between Intel and AMD. Already, AMD had begun to outclass Intel in terms of multi-threaded performance in quite a few applications, but couldn't quite outclass Intel in terms of single-threaded performance. This was a major talking point for Intel, which claimed they were still the number one processor for gaming. Zen 2 was still extremely important for a number of reasons though. First of all, AMD moved the production of their CPUs from Global Foundries to TSMC and begun to use TSMC's 7 nanometer process node for Zen 2. AMD also improved the IMC, or Integrated Memory Controller, on Zen 2 chips, meaning better performance and RAM speeds could be pushed higher. In 2020, AMD released its Zen 3 CPUs under the Ryzen 5000 lineup. Not only did it significantly outperform Intel in multi-core performance, AMD had actually surpassed Intel in single-threaded performance for the first time. This was the first time in an entire decade that AMD was actually able to surpass Intel in every facet possible, not only in multi-threaded applications like Blender or various video editing applications, but also in single-threaded applications like games. AMD had finally done it. Over the course of the decade, it had gone from a massive failure to outclassing Intel in both multi-threaded and single-threaded performance. From nearly going bankrupt to booming in business, this was the rise of AMD.